Hello out there all historians and welcome to your lesson on the causes of the Industrial Revolution under the causes tab of the Industrial Revolution website. Um, during this lesson we're going to look at a pretty big topic, the causes of the Industrial Revolution. Um, probably the most content heavy of maybe all of um, these topics here um, in terms of just all the ideas and concepts you need to wrap your head around. So your learning intention and success criteria for this lesson. So your to know is causes of the Industrial Revolution. And by the end of the lesson, you need to be able to recall and explain the technologies and practices that led to the Industrial Revolution. So the two things we're looking at this lesson are the technologies and the practices that led to the IR. Um, first little task here, a bit of a warm up, um, is watch this um, video here by Simple History and write down six facts in your workbook. And um, that's a pretty easy task there. Um, so these are the technologies and practices that led to the Industrial Revolution. So let's go through these together now. So the first one is agricultural practices evolved. So from the mid 1700s to 1800s, agricultural practices increased significantly. They also changed significantly as well. This resulted in more food being made faster. This added more food production, uh, which supported and allowed for a growing population and trade. Less farmers were needed because machines and animals were used more, meaning people moved to large towns and cities and they moved away from farms. Next one is steam power. So the steam power technology came from Newcomen's steam engine made in 1712. In 1765, James Watt from Scotland was given a Newcomen steam engine to repair. He noticed that it was, uh, was wasting a lot of steam and invented a better one they used iron and coal. The Watt engine became available to the public in 1769, and this resulted in factories becoming more productive and factories were now located in more places. Our next one is transportation. So the Watt engine and advancement in the size of steam engines in the 1800s saw the advancement in transport technologies. Steam power was used to power steamboats and trains. The steam powered uh, cars were eventually invented and mass produced in the late 1800s, but only very wealthy, wealthy people owned them. Roads, canals, and railways. So the advancements in steam power transport led to the increased amount of quality roads, canals, and railways. A lot of new roads, canals, and gateways were created. Um, so really important as well, I, I think it's worth acknowledging that canals were used um, as the primary source of transportation of mass goods before um, steam trains and steam engines. So um, it's worth noting that while more canals were made, they were actually being used less. There were advantages to canals, though. Um, textile technology. So the spinning jenny was invented by James Hargreaves uh, from England in 1764 and was a spinning wheel that could spin eight threads of cotton at once. Before, people could only spin one thread at once. The spinning jenny would eventually be able to spin 80 threads at once, which makes it 10 times faster than what it was. Other significant inventions were the spinning mule invented by Samuel Crompton in 1779 and Elias House from America's sewing machine in 1846. These machines not only sped up the process of making clothes, but gave people places to work and supported a growing population in Britain. The last uh, cause of the Industrial Revolution, guys, is communication. So the ability to communicate over long distances evolved dramatically, with Samuel Morse, who invented the Morse Code, also inventing the electrical telegraph um, in 1844. So the Morse Code is the system used to communicate using the telegraph. The ability to communicate evolved even further when Alexander Graham Bell from Scotland invented the telephone in 1876. Um, so guys, your second task for this lesson, your first task for the video, your second lesson is a bit of source work. So we're going to go through these sources together now. So source one is a diagram or an illustration of two thrusters and a trapper in an English coal mine in 1853. This source is found in John C. Cobden's book, The White Slaves of England. So what is this source? Well, it's an illustration. Who made the source? We've got John C. Cobden. When was the source made? It was made in 1853. Uh, what do you think a trapper does? So a trapper opens and closes the doors to the mine shafts, as we can see in this image here. Why did the author make this source? To probably show you the age of kids uh, who worked in mines and the age of most miners, the difficult and also confined working conditions. I actually just realized I forgot uh, question four. What does a thruster do? They push the mine carts uh, full of heavy coal and other minerals. Um, number uh, seven, observe the source, describe the working conditions of thrusters and trappers. So they look pretty dangerous and confined, I'd say as well. You can also tell they're not wearing uh, really any or, or much clothing at all, let alone protective clothing, um, which gives you an insight to how unsafe it must have been as well. 
It's also not very lit. You can see there's sort of only one source of lighting here in front of the cart, and there's no real other source of lighting. You can see there's the same on this cart down here. So I'd imagine it would be pretty dark down there as well. Source two, we've got a sketch of an electrical telegraph system um, found in 1904, edition of the Providence Sunday Journal. So this is a drawing from a newspaper. What is the source? So it is a sketch from a newspaper who made the source. Well, the only thing we have to go off um, is the Providence Sunday Journal. So that's who made the source. We can see that down here as well. Um, when was the source made? We've got 1904. Um, question four, observe the source. Name two pieces of equipment you need to operate a telegraph and state why you would need them. So here you need the transmitter. So that's what's actually um, transports, or I should say, um, communicates the Morse code. That's where you actually put the Morse code in. Um, and then you've got headphones. So you can hear the person on the other end, um, you know, using their transmitter as well. And their um, dots and their pauses that make up Morse code. Then lastly here, source three is a sewing machine invented by um, Elias Howe in 1846. So the source is actually the sewing machine. It's not the photo of the sewing machine. It is the sewing machine itself. Who made the source? We've got Elias Howe. This is actually the sewing machine that he invented. Uh, when was the source made? 1846. Um, question four. A modern sewing machine uses a pedal to spin the wheel and operate the needle. Our sewing machine didn't have a pedal. So observe the source. So we've got to look at it. How would someone during the Industrial Revolution move the needle? Well, what they would do is they would use this handle here and they would use one of their hands to spin that around it again and again and again and move the needle up and down, up and down. But now we have a pedal and it's uh, fully um, operated with that pedal and mechanised using that pedal. Um, task three, guys, you can go ahead and access um, the task called Factors Leading to the Industrial Revolution on Education Perfect. And when you finish all those three tasks, guys, then you've got a Kahoot you can play by clicking on this link here. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, you know, big topic there, kind of surface level knowledge. Next lesson, we'll dive down into the agricultural revolution in particular. Um, but if you enjoy using this website or you want to stay updated to any new websites or any new lessons that are made and existing websites like this one, please go ahead and subscribe. Thank you.